It's been a full year since I reviewed Astropad and a lot has changed. Okay, just one thing. Make sure you add like explosions when my hand goes. So to recap, a year ago, I really, really liked Astropad, but I also didn't think it was quite ready to replace a conventional drawing tablet like a Cintiq. Unfortunately, using a stylus on the iPad at the time just wasn't accurate. Now with the Apple Pencil, you have that accuracy. All right, so this is how it works. You install the Astropad app on your Mac and you also install it on your iPad. You turn them both on and they magically find each other if they're on the same Wi-Fi network or connected with the USB cable. And poof, just like that, your Mac is mirrored onto your iPad screen and you can draw on it and you have touch controls and all that amazing stuff. I personally tend to connect it with the USB cable just because one, I get the added benefit of charging my iPad, but also I notice there's slightly less latency. I wouldn't recommend using AstroPad with any other stylus other than the Apple Pencil because they just aren't accurate enough and most of them are really buggy. I did a stylus review before the Pencil came out and I was totally underwhelmed. You can check out that video, but I wouldn't recommend it. AstroPad also picks up on the Apple Pencil's built-in pressure sensitivity. And it's so fantastic that I can use things like Photoshop or Clip Studio or all these wonderful desktop apps on my iPad with the Apple Pencil. Oh, and I forgot about palm rejection. Like palm rejection used to be awful on the iPad, but with the Apple Pencil and with AstroPad, it's fantastic. AstroPad even lets you toggle on whether you're in hand mode or stylus mode. But I find an AstroPad, even when I'm in stylus mode, I can still use my fingers to pinch and zoom in on something. When you set up AstroPad on your Mac, you set up how much of your desktop that you wanna see. You can go full screen and see the entire thing on your iPad, or you can go 100% or 200% and just show uh, a section of an area, or you can zoom into an even smaller area if you want. I found that being able to crop it at 100% was really useful for Adobe Illustrator where you need that kind of pinpoint mouse-like accuracy to hit your touch points and your little anchor points. AstroPad also recognizes is some touch gestures. I can use two fingers to kind of scroll around my document. I could also pinch and zoom, which I use a lot. AstroPad also has its own zoom mode. By holding down this little ring for a couple seconds, you can enter it. The only time I really used this was in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, if I had a lot of information packed into one area and it was kind of hard to hit quite the right hit point, I found that kind of zooming in that extra level and, and being able to get into the, the grimy pieces of that vector art was really helpful. I also want to talk about this sliding tray along the side. There's a lot of shortcuts in here. You've got your brush tool, eraser tool. I can increase, decrease my brush size, zoom in and out. And another thing I should notice, this is completely customizable. There's no such thing as a sploder tool. I made that up. I just mapped it to the delete key. I could also toggle shortcut keys directly on and off the screen. Really nice if you need like shift or control or something like that. So let's get to the big question. Can the iPad using AstroPad replace a Cintiq tablet? Yes with an asterisk. There are a few things that you should keep in mind if you're thinking about making that switch. The first is latency. If you're already using a Cintiq and you're used to seeing exactly what you draw, exactly when you draw it, you're going to notice some lag in AstroPad. I bring this up because if you're used to a Cintiq, that might be something that could possibly bug you. They have thought this through. They have initiated this little feature. It's this magenta line. It follows your pencil everywhere. So even if your stroke is a little bit off and there is a little bit of a delay, you don't see it because that line is, is trailing along. So you can still get that kind of accuracy. I think this is a pretty good trade-off. And for me and the purposes of the work that I create, I think it works extraordinarily well. The latency doesn't bother me but it will probably bother some people. The next thing I should mention are the fuzzies. You've probably noticed on the screen that whenever I open a menu or whenever I draw really quickly, that the lines kind of fuzz up a little bit. There's a reason for this, and this is intentional too. One thing I can say about AstroPad that is really impressive is how crisp the image is. I've used Duet Display on the iPad, and you can see like little fragmentation on images and things like that, or you can see extra colors around the fonts. This is because it's rendering another screen. And AstroPad has worked really, really hard to make it super, super crisp, and it is. It is dead on beautiful. But the trade-off here is that when you render something new on the screen, it goes and has to grab more information and actually render it. And that takes a second. And that's where that blurring effect comes in. So if you're a person who likes to scroll around their drawing a lot or move a lot of things around on the screen, you're going to see a lot more blurring. Now, when I moved away from using a Cintiq full-time a couple years ago, the thing that I missed most were physical buttons. I found ways to add on-screen buttons, whether it's on the Surface or on the iPad or, or, or anything else, but it's just not quite the same. I 
I love being able to rest my palm on the side with like my thumb over the undo button or on the scroll wheel to change my brush size. There's just something really nice about that. When you have those kind of buttons and menus and things like that on the screen, they're really helpful, uh, but you have to look at them when you're pressing them. You can't just go by touch. Another thing I should mention is that if you are connecting to a, a retina screened Mac, this looks beautiful. If you're not using a retina screen Mac, like here in these screenshots, you can see the actual pixels. So you're not getting the crisp interface and the crisp drawing that you might on a retina screen. So whenever I use AstroPad, I tend to mirror it on my actual laptop display, which is a retina display because it looks so much better. Also, I should mention that using AstroPad can be kind of battery intensive. I know I've gotten like eight to 10 hours of use out of my iPad Pro, just, you know, surfing the web and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm probably, I would say, I don't know, four or five hours using something like AstroPad. This is totally unscientific, uh, but it was, it's just kind of a gut feel. I know that the battery is draining faster, which is why I tend to plug it in via USB when I'm using it. So those are just a couple of the things that I figured are probably worth pointing out when you're using an iPad to kind of replace something like a Cintiq tablet. So what's my opinion on this whole thing? Well, this is the third video where I've talked about AstroPad. I did my initial review and then I talked about how I set up Illustrator in it. And there's a reason why I talk about it so much. I think it's fantastic. It's amazing. For me, the pros of being able to use it on my iPad way outnumber the, the cons that come with it. Part of the reason I like it so much is because it's so fast to set up. I have an Artisol tablet. It's sitting actually right below my camera right now. You can't see it. And I, I really like that tablet. But when I have to do a little touch up or I only have a couple minutes to draw, I always reach for the iPad. Mostly because with the Artisol or any kind of Cintiq tablet, I have to plug in a lot of cords and I have to then rearrange my screens and then I can start drawing. Whereas with this, I can just turn on both apps and I'm drawing. If I'm going to settle in and do like longer stretches of work, so I'll probably pull out the Artisol. But, uh, you know, just having the convenience of always having the iPad there has been really nice. Plus, it's an iPad. So there's so many other apps out there that I can draw and I can take it on the go. Whereas uh, with this antique, you're kind of tied to your computer and desktop and there's a lot more stuff you're carrying around with you. And you can't play Angry Birds out of Cintiq. No one plays Angry Birds anymore. So that's what I think about AstroPad. I'm thoroughly impressed by it. I tend to use it a lot. I don't use it for long stretches. I tend to go for my Surface Pro or a different iPad app, uh, but for short stretches where I just want to, you know, kind of fiddle around and, and draw something quickly, tweak an icon or that sort of thing, I'm always grabbing AstroPad. It's a fantastic little app. So if you have any questions about AstroPad, feel free to leave them in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter, and if you want to see some of my future reviews, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in another week or two.